Greetings. I would like to read an email I got from one of my uh, listeners. And uh, I'm just going to read it. This one writes, I just want to encourage you, writing to me, you know, this one was writing to me. I just want to encourage you that with the times of trouble and great persecution coming, I think it will also be the biggest revival amongst B12 tribes. And if you don't know, uh, my note is this. If you don't know who the 12 tribes are, take a look at where Paul went in his ministry. Think about the people who printed the Bibles, who built the churches, the people who became Christians. Read Galatians 3.29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's the end of my note. Let me continue reading. I think it will also be the biggest revival amongst the 12 tri tribes. I think according to Joel chapter 2, our God is going to pour out his spirit in a way unimaginable and unknown to this day. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. It will be his last ditch effort to round up his lost sheep. My note, Jesus said he came for the lost sheep. And he said, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Do you hear the voice of the shepherd? Okay, let me read, continue reading. It will be his last ditch effort to round up his lost sheep. You and I will do signs and wonders, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead of God's people only. The fields are white. Uh, Jesus said the fields were white and ripe for harvest. Oh, yeah. As the white genocide agenda gets into full swing, so does God. He will pour out his spirit for the white sheep. How will he do this? I don't know. But I, have, I, but I haven't learned all this just to be lined up in a FEMA camp and be beheaded. He needs workers in the harvest field. Even Jesus said that. He said the... the Oh, let me, let me look it up. Uh, every time I, I should learn more scriptures, but I don't. This wasn't exactly what I was looking for. However, it is appropriate. Joel chapter 3 and verse 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. For the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Revelation 14, 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. In John chapter 4, and verse 35 and 36, uh, this is not exactly where I was looking for, but it's appropriate. Say ye not, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, for they are white, all ready to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Okay, I found it. Matthew 9, 35 on. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Well, that was the last time you've ever heard the gospel of the kingdom in a synagogue, I bet. Uh, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, 
but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Good advice. All right, let's continue reading this wonderful email that I got. Um, let's see. As the white genocide agenda gets into full swing, so does God. He will pour out his spirit for the white sheep. How he will do this, I don't know, but I haven't learned all this just to be lined up in a FEMA camp and beheaded. He needs workers in the harvest field. He is making us ready now. In Acts 8, 26 through 40, how Philip was just gone from the centurion, like God teleported him somewhere else. I believe that will happen with us, and maybe our shadow will heal. Uh, let me stop here in my note. Um, Peter, I think it was Peter, when uh, in the book of Acts, when Peter passed over somebody and their shadow touched somebody sick, they were healed if I remember correctly. Uh, let me look it up. Let me look it up real quick. Let's read the Acts of the Apostles. This is after the Apostles got the Holy Spirit, uh, after Jesus was taken up into heaven. Acts chapter 5 and verse 12. And by the hands of the Apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is of the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. That means they were P.O.'d people. They were angry. They were mad. That's what indignation means. Indignation means extreme hatred. And who's this high priest? He's not a Catholic priest. No, he's a Jewish priest. They're healing people. They're doing good things to heal, help people. And the Jewish priest is angry. He's filled with indignation. Doesn't that figure? Hey, you guys are raining on our parade. Uh, let's see. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is of the sect of the Sadducees, were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Think about that, people. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that they entered into the table temple early in the morning and taught, but the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, Truly, the uh, the prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. Oh, yeah. You know, people, when Christians are numerous, the workers of iniquity are cautious. 
And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? What name? The name of Jesus. They're not teaching in the name of Yeshua. Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it, priest. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew, and hanged on a tree. And who's Peter talking to? The priests. They're not Catholic priests, by the way. The God of our father, of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And so is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Yeah, it's not enough that you just killed Jesus. Now you want to kill the apostles too, right? Then stood up there one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. You know what? In the Talmud, I have read some of the writings of Gamaliel. And I tell you what, this guy knew the, the, the Old Testament scriptures. I, I, I've got to admit, I was very impressed with his writings. Um, and according to legend, he became a Christian. After all, Paul, one of his students, um, became a Christian, right? Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said to them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves as what, uh, what ye intend to do is touching these men. In other words, pay attention. What are, what are you going to do to these men? Right? Verse 36. For before these days rose up Thudius, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught, which is nothing. After this rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone, for if this counsel or if or this work be of men, it will come to naught. It will come to nothing, right? If this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yeshua. Oh, no. That's not what it says. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. How many pre-tribbers are going to rejoice and daily in the temple, in every house, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus, who is uh, Jesus Christ. Let me continue reading this thing. All right, uh, let's go back to the letter. In Acts eight twenty six through forty, how Philip was just gone from the centurion, like God teleported him somewhere else. I believe that will happen with us, and maybe our shadow will heal, or maybe God will do a new thing with us anointed ones who are called according to his purpose. And how Paul said they rejoiced and praised God when they suffered in bonds for his sake. Although I'm a frail, uh, over 60-year-old, 
I'm not going to give you this person's age. Although I'm a frail, over 60-year-old, so I don't know how many beatings or stonings I could take at this point, I believe most, if not all, the people I pray for will come to his light. It will be exciting and amazing times to be alive. Who knows? You and us might be the ones to even see Jesus descend in the clouds of glory. We might. I've been saying that for quite a few years. Um, who knows? You and us might be the ones to even see Jesus descend in the clouds of glory if we hold on till the end. These are the events I must focus on to stay encouraged. Part of me wants to hide under a rock till he comes, but I know there is some awesome events coming to his children. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. He's come for his little flock of white sheep. So, Bob, stay encouraged and even allow yourself to get excited. We ain't seen nothing yet. Have a good weekend, Bob. Well, let me give you the reply here. I said this was the best email I've read in many years. I believe this is so true. I have said for years that persecution shall wake up the sheep and separate them from the goats. Yeah, and goats will probably be my next study. When the sheep see who is being killed off in the time of Jacob's trouble, which is Israel, and who it is that is doing the killing, same people that beat the apostles that I just read, supposedly God's chosen, many shall wake up and know that they were lied to. How many pre-tribbers will deny their lukewarm faith to save their lives, unable to feed themselves, having done nothing to prepare? Many of them shall say, I miss the rapture. No, there is no rapture since Jesus was a false prophet and the Jews were right all along, many shall say. At least that's my opinion. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this letter as much as I did. Boy, I'll tell you what, thank you for that letter. I appreciate it very much. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.